everybody! My name is Stacy Dunn and I'm a Solutions Engineer here at Sneak. Just to give you a quick overview, we're going to be talking about how you can secure your entire software development lifecycle that may contain some or all of AWS's related components. And how do you do that? Well, by integrating Sneak! At the end of the day, we believe the goal here is to just make your life easier. And I'm going to give you some life-changing examples here in just a second. But first, let's talk about why we're all here. Open source, cloud, it couldn't be easier to spin something up in the matter of seconds. Here's an interesting statistic. 100% of people make mistakes, myself included. Have you ever pushed something into production and caused it to break? I know I have. They don't call me chaos monkey for nothing. So why choose AWS? With its easy signup process, its rocket fast deployments, and limitless capacity, why not? Now more than ever, people are flocking to the AWS umbrella. And AWS has the ability to cover your entire software development lifecycle from start to finish. Let's start with the problem and work backward from there. There are so many ways that you could potentially introduce exploitable vulnerabilities into your cloud native software development lifecycle. As a developer, you don't need me to tell you that a lot of security tools are intrusive and cause friction. Maybe security just has their eyes on production, which isn't the best approach. We're not getting a full picture of everything that's going on whenever that happens. So when something inevitably explodes, then it's on you to start the process all the way over. And as a developer, that's not fun to do. You know, it's about doing it right the first time and making sure all these risks are mitigated from the start. The cool thing about Sneak is we have a platform of solutions that already look, act, smell, and even taste like the solutions that you're already using. And like I was saying, we have to look at the bigger picture. Think of it like an iceberg. That's a pretty easy analogy to understand. What we see on the surface, such as our own proprietary code, isn't the only thing that is making up our software development lifecycle. Of course, the heart of it is open source, and then maybe you're using containers and Kubernetes and infrastructure as code. These are all individual pieces that have to be secured throughout the process. This is your typical software development lifecycle, kind of generic, but just to give you an idea of how Sneak fits in. We go as far left as your local machine. We're gonna be integrating with those IDEs that you're already accustomed to using. We have coverage for your Git repositories throughout the CI CD stage. You can even create a security gate and then also monitoring in production. So again, this is just kind of that generic perspective, but what if we add AWS into the mix? What does that look like? Let's fill in the blanks. As a developer working strictly in AWS, it might look something like this. Within AWS, we can test and fix a couple of different aspects of our code at a few different touch points. A great example would be to leverage Sneak CLI at the build stage or use the first party callout in Code Pipeline. With the ability to add Sneak directly into Code Pipeline, it is a great way to gate deployments. On top of that, we can even implement security and monitoring into ECR, EKS, and Lambda. For example, with our ability to scan ECR, not only do we provide prioritized vulnerability counts, but also rich contextual data and base image recommendations. Things like this help to get that whole comprehensive security strategy I'm going on about. For a bit of added spice, here's a mixture of solutions with AWS as the plurality shareholder, so to speak. In this example, I've chosen the IDE to be VS Code. And for the source control, I chose Bitbucket by Atlassian because not only do we have a great partnership with them, so does AWS. On that similar note, we also have integrations available for Jira ticketing. So what I wanna show you now is what this looks like from that code pipeline perspective. Let's jump into a quick demo. Here we are in AWS Code Pipeline. I have an incredibly rudimentary and simplified pipeline set up here strictly for example purposes. This is not indicative of a real world production scenario. I have my source set as AWS Code Commit in this example, and between that and my deployment stage, I have elected to add a sneak scan. In order to do this, all you have to do is add an additional stage within your pipeline. And in the case of adding a new stage, we would click the plus add stage here, but in my case, I already have it built, so I'm going to simply edit it. 
This stage is comprised of a single action that has a few options to choose from. I've named it scan, so it's obvious to me what is occurring. I've chosen my action provider as sneak, which is a first party call out under the invoke section of the dropdown list. And my input artifact is set to source artifact. My output is labeled as results and it takes no effort to connect to sneak. I select my account using auth O and select the organization I wish to attach to, decide whether or not I want to break the build, set a severity threshold. And in the case of me doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the minimum severity of high. That way anything that is high and critical will be flagged and it should break the build. Now I just have to accept this on the AWS side and confirm that way these things are in sync together. And now I'm going to save my changes and test our theory. So in theory, this should break my build. I'm going to release this change. And what I want to see is I want to see that once that it does get to the stage and it rescans, that it does fail like it did that time before. So our scan is in progress right now, and shortly we should see either a pass or a fail. And there it is, yay failure. I've never been so excited to see something fail. Let's go ahead and see what those results look like. We are met with the typical sneak fashion of having a very aesthetic overview of everything. We're gonna look into this particular vulnerability right here for prototype pollution, and we have a lot of great information in front of us. We have our detailed paths, our overview, some details about this particular vulnerability with the CVE attached. And on top of that, we have the type of attack that it is, any affected environments, how to prevent it, and the most important thing I would say, actionable remediation advice. And this is just one example of a vulnerability. There are tons and tons of them here. The idea is at least now we know they exist and they are not going to be pushed into production. Shifting gears, but staying on topic, another easy way to implement security are sneak quick starts. Quick starts are automated reference deployments built by AWS solutions architects and AWS partners. Quick starts help you deploy popular technologies based on security best practices and high availability. These accelerators reduce hundreds of manual processes to secure your SDLC at the speed of you. If you're not already using quick starts, you totally should. Here's how effortless it is to do. Now that we know what these AWS quick starts are, it's a matter of, okay, where do we find them? And here they are, they have their own page. I'm gonna give you the three different examples that we have here for sneak. All I had to do was type in sneak SNYK into the search field, and I'm met with these options. The one in particular that I'm gonna drill down into is the sneak security one. So we look into this and we get, again, an overview, and we have here information on what we're gonna build. We have some reference architecture put in front of us and the different deployment options that are available. So if I go to how to deploy, I can choose one of those three options and I'm gonna choose this top one here. Whenever I do, it's just a matter of, okay, we're brought here to the CloudFormation template. We're gonna create the stack. I have the template ready. I'm gonna hit next. I could view it in designer, but I already know what it looks like from that previous page. We're brought directly to the CloudFormation stack area. We're creating our stack and specifying the stack details. I could put in my sneak organization ID, my sneak AWS account ID. And really, this is just a matter of filling in the blanks where necessary. I could do tagging. Of course, I have to do my permissions and IAM roles and maybe even specify some advanced options. But the idea here is this is really, really easy and simple to do. Uh, at the end of it, you just clickety click acknowledge and create your stack. The AWS quick starts that I was just referring to are more of an opinionated approach on things. If you need something that's a little bit more flexible in the specific case of using Amazon EKS with Sneak, we do have a public extension available. And in this case, this would enable you to import and test your running workloads and identify vulnerabilities in their associated images. I'm gonna go ahead and click here and we're gonna look at it. So we're met with the details in the description and below you see that it has a schema. This schema can act as a template and you can change things out to fit your organization. That way you have, again, that flexibility to make these decisions as opposed to relying on something that's a little bit more static. To activate, you just click here, fill out some additional details, make some decisions, and all you have to do at that point is just activate the extension. Both of the examples that I just covered are basically just CloudFormation templates. 
Cloud Formation templates are a part of Infrastructure as Code, or IAC. And I mentioned earlier that Sneak has a solution for IAC. And with that, we have the capability to scan your Cloud Formation templates, your Terraform files, among other things, for any vulnerabilities or misconfiguration issues. Let's start with scanning a Cloud Formation template. I'm going to show two different examples, but I would like to start always in the Sneak UI. First, I'm going to show CloudFormation and then Terraform. And here I have my Sneak IAC CloudFormation example. Um, what I'm going to do is dive into this Fargate.yaml since it does have a couple of high level things I can see right from the UI. And yikes. OK, well, so what do we have here? We have this S3 block public ACLs control is disabled. But what does that necessarily mean to me? All right, I have my sneak policy laid out. There's a path here. And the issue is the bucket does not prevent the creation of public ACLs. Not the best way to go about things. So what's that impact mean to me? Anyone who can manage the bucket's ACLs will be able to grant public access to the bucket. So I have to know who can manage the buckets. And if I don't know that, the answer is probably anyone. Well, how do I resolve that? All right, I can set these properties, I can change a variable, and the attribute just has to be set to true for these specific things. And I have it all lined out right here. Some of these are collapsible because these cloud formation templates can get really big, but wherever I'm going to find where I need to change, it's gonna be there, and I have the confidence that I'll be able to do it based on this information. Putting on my developer hat, I'm here in my terminal, and I'm gonna go ahead and test the same file just to see what it looks like from this perspective. Good news, we have the same results. That's what we wanted to see. We have these same S3 block public ACL controls and it's disabled. We have the same policy information and then we also have how it was introduced as well as it's categorized and prioritized for us so we can see what's most important to look at first. Here's what it looks like whenever we scan a Terraform file. Diving into the Sneak UI, I can look at my Terraform project that I have here. Looking into my main.tf, I can immediately see, oh no, I've got a high level vulnerability or rather a misconfiguration issue. And the issue is that the credentials are configured via the provider attributes. The impact is, okay, well, that could accidentally disclose my credentials in configuration files, variable definition files, and so on and so forth. The resolution is that I can set my access credentials via environment variables and remove the access key and secret key attributes from the configuration. And again, here are the results from the developer's perspective within the CLI. And this is great because it's not only going to show you these results, but we're also going to see any newly introduced issues and gain visibility from a reporting perspective. And this is not just something that we can do like from a static point of view. This is something we can do as we're developing. We can make these changes as these things happen. And remember, this isn't just CloudFormation or Terraform just alone. We have similar capabilities for Helm, Kubernetes deployment, files and so on. I know this is all a lot to digest, but if you're still hungry, the next course is available. There are tons of different SneakCon videos for you to look at that expand upon some of these topics in different ways. And if you're anything like me and you like to get your hands dirty, why don't you go and just try some of this stuff yourself? Already using Code Pipeline? Add Sneak as a build step. It's free. In need of a gold standard deployment? Use one of our free quick starts. Don't already have a sneak account? Set one up. It's free. Don't have anything to test? That's okay. We have workshops available for you. And guess what? They're also free. It's all about making your life easier and building securely. Yeah.